So he walks her home. They continue this conversation in a different scene. Would we say walk, though? Um, <laughs> they move their body. They, they locomote somewhere. <laughs> These alien robots. Uh. Doesn't go well. Like, they... Everybody in this movie, they learn to walk, run, and speak, like, for this movie. Like, night before. (laughs) (laughs) Only kind of, though, really. Well, right, right, not well. (laughs) God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because everything else the voices tell me to do is illegal. I'm your host, Noah Illusions, and sitting somewhere to my left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So, uh, I just, I'm just i just going to try to filibuster this episode with other stuff. Um, okay, I got it. I you know what's it. a great game? Uh, super hot for the Oculus Quest. It's actually yeah, it's great. Pretty, pretty, pretty kick-ass, but we, we actually have to do... The movie. We brought a guest and everything, Heath. We have to do the movie. Well, let's ask the guest. Would you rather just talk about video <laughs> games? I mean, you watch this movie, right? Like, what's uh, better? Anything like, else or this movie? I mean, so I did watch it, but like, I'm playing Luigi's Mansion 3 and I could oh, chat about that for nice. hours. So, excellent choice. Uh. <laughs> oh, I got to bring, see, I, I have that game. I got it for Christmas and my wife hasn't let me play it yet because she says she has to play it and beat it. Or else I'll just come in and go, oh, it's behind the such and such. And she's uh, right. I will. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Backseat playing, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That's it. Mm-hmm. All right. And I, I guess I should probably introduce you at this point. You might I have noticed that probably. voice wasn't <laughs> Eli's. Uh, we do have a, a great, uh, we, we've stepped up quite a bit from Eli. We're happy to welcome actress, writer, video film essayist, and special guest masochist, Maggie May Fish. Maggie, welcome to the show. Hello. Oh, thank you guys so much for having me. I this was truly w- just a wonderful gift that you gave me. This film, so <laughs> I uh, yes, uh, this will be very fun. I'm excited. Okay, that is not the typical reaction. I'm looking forward to the tone going downhill from there. Like you're being like <laughs> way nice about it right now, but we're gonna have to talk about this whole movie. No, no. <laughs> All right, so so, but we should explain. This is not your first foray into the world of Christian cinema, correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, so I on my YouTube channel, I do. Film essays on films, video essays on <laughs> films. There we go. That's it. Yeah. And so the last we did a series of three essays on the Christian propaganda universe. Oh, didn't you? You did Fireproof, right? Yes. Yes. Ah, yeah. Right. <laughs> wait, wait, which, which, which are the other two? Uh, so we did Fireproof, I'm in Love with a Church Girl. Oh, God, uh, that was so good. Oh, just mwah, wonderful. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and then we closed it out with Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas. So Beautiful picks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Kirk Cameron Saving Christmas in a, in a lot of ways is what made this show into a thing. Wow. Right? Wow. If, you go to, if, if you go to our Patreon page, you'll still see the the poster from that with Eli's face superimposed into <laughs> Kirk Cameron's body there. <laughs> The, the, the fact that that movie existed, we were like, okay, there has to be the opposite of that movie in the world somewhere, too. <laughs> we like to think of it as Kirk Cameron's body superimposed onto Eli's face. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, I like to, yeah <laughs> that's that's a better way to think about it. All right. So, well, I'll tell you what. We, we went next fucking level on you. Heath, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Just in, in advance <laughs> to Maggie, <laughs> to everybody. Yeah, we watched. If you liked it, you should have put a purity ring on it. That um <laughs> that absolutely should have been the title. No, it's called yeah. Love <laughs> Waits, and it's <laughs> it's that classic story of a Nebraska ingenue moving to the big city <laughs> of <laughs> suburban South Dakota <laughs> and trying to avoid being corrupted. But more specifically, it's it's a thirty minute list of misogynist talking points and other Christian terrible evil propaganda talking points, surrounded by ninety minutes of establishing shots. That's that's what we watch. <laughs> yes. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and and by the way, fun fact: this is straight from Donald James Parker's real life. He's the guy. He wrote it. He plays the creepy band director in this one. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! He's so mean. That's oh, him? Yeah, that's... He's mean. He's <laughs> that's like mean. Him. 
I have notes on this band director. I was like, that's the meanest band director. And like, he's not nice. I can't believe this movie's dedicated to him. So, wow. Oh, yeah, no, this he is. Terrible. He just stands back and yells, finish him. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, th- yeah. He's the worst. He he wrote this movie also. He stars in a bunch of the other ones by Chip Rossetti, too. So we've dealt with this guy before. <laughs> and he's he's from South Dakota in real life. So this is him being like, yep, whenever those fucking rubes from Nebraska moved to the bustling metropolis of whatever the fuck <laughs> oh Dakota where my I live. God. Are overwhelmed by all the big city se- sexuality of sex. Sex having, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, so Maggie, uh, this is our traditional question. Usually goes to Eli. We're going to let you field it today. And it's a big fucking question this time around. How bad was this movie? Well, uh, before we were recorded, I, I said this and I stand by it. This film reaches David Lynch levels of <laughs> just like abstract, uh, like horror. It kind of, there's one scene that just, I think, really encapsulated it. It was when the main girl runs into the sad sex ed teacher at church and it's just a faraway shot with two oh. lone, terrible artificial trees to the left and the right. <laughs> just a white wall. And then those two characters just speaking to each other for about seven minutes. And, uh, it's woo! dark. It's, it's dark. dark. It's so yeah. dark. This is like Christianity noir. It's rough. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. It, it, it almost felt purposeful how... It, it it chills you to the bone. It really does. So yeah, it, everything that Chip Rossetti does always serves so close to the point of self parody that you have to wonder. But it's it's always not though. just yeah. sincere enough. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, he's trying to make movies every time. Yeah. He's trying really hard. He he made a movie that you could have called "Friends Don't Let Friends Be Jewish." Oh, sincerely. No. Oh, well, yeah, they have to become completed Jews, which means Christian. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's yeah, a just, real no, yeah, be oh thankful we didn't bring you on for the unexpected bar mitzvah. It does get worse than this. Ooh, you guys want to just do that? That would be better than this too. <laughs> we can just redo that one. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything you want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Uh, yeah, I, I got a couple. I'm going to go with best worst. Scene breaks. First of all, <laughs> about half the scenes in this movie. Two characters show up and say like one sentence each. And then they're like, all right, well, that's all I had for <laughs> for this room. You want to uh, you wanna, you wanna think about some more sentences? Well, oh. we'll, we'll reconvene tomorrow for this exact same conversation. But like in the kitchen or something. I don't know. We'll inspire <laughs> some dialogue there, right? Kitchen stuff. We'll break it up. Yep. All right. So, Maggie, do you have a best worst? Yeah, I a uh, thing that I I would say best worst side characters who are saying lines because clearly some other actors didn't show up. There <laughs> there are these group scenes where a side character will say one opinion and then a couple lines later he will say the opposite opinion. Yes, just because someone that, has yes, to that say was that. like clearly that was someone else's line and that actor didn't show up, so they're just like, oh well, like you can say this one too. And so their care all their characters look psychotic, just like <laughs> just one eightying on all their opinions. Uh and that happens multiple times, so Oh, they, they they get that with location at one point. It was the most amazing thing. There was a there's a point in this movie. I'll point it out when we get to it where the actors couldn't decide whose house this was between two <laughs> characters. So they're all playing it as though it's a different person's <laughs> house. I loved it oh so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right. So I was going to go with best, worst choice of central thing. So, OK, this is a movie about abstinence. And I guess Chip Rossetti gets all the, you know, halfway to, he gets, he's done casting. He's, he's on the first day of shooting. He realizes that you can't really show people not having sex, right? That's not a thing that you can video. So it, he's, he's like, oh, we got to make this about something. And they choose flute, despite the fact that not a single actor involved in this movie can play the flute. Why couldn't Which they means, get a flute play? Like, well, do, do they, do they thought these were such good actors that they had to have these. Well, actors. that's the thing. It's not like you needed someone who could play flute and act to make it into a Chip Rossetti movie. And it didn't have to be fucking flute, which means Chip Rossetti stood up in front of this cast and said, can any of you do anything at all? 
And the only answer he got was that girl going like, well, I had a flute lesson once. Right? I know you hold it to the right instead of to the left. <laughs> I guess that's something. So, that's absolutely what he did. There, there's no there's no other excuse for that. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a Chip Rossetti flick on the other side of this break. So we're going to keep it brief. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the inexplicable choices that are Love Waits. Hey, Mr. Parker. Um, I have a wife um, that wants uh, to have sex with me. Look, um, I get it. I'm an attractive guy. Uh, it no, happens. No, no, all, no you, uh, actually, the, you look kind of like a, I don't know, like a postmenopausal olive oil type on chemo. It's. And, and that's your wife's type. I get it. Well, but I'm a Christian, no. which is why I have to turn down all the women who throw themselves at me every day okay. by asking suggestive things like super salad or saying I, we don't allow binoculars in no, no, no. here. Mr. Parker, Mr. Parker, um, that's not remotely what I'm here to see you about. Oh, your mom wants to have sex no, with no. you. No, What? Your sister? No. Sister-in-law. No, okay. I'm here about the script for Love Waits. Oh, right. Pretty yeah. good, huh? That one? No, uh, not at all. Is all of it, like, uh, on purpose? I'm. T what do you mean? Okay, well, this scene here where we watch the girl do the dishes between sending and receiving an email... Mm, you're not a writer, I see. Well, see, we have to establish the passage of time. Like Otherwise, it won't make sense later when people talk about yesterday and tomorrow. It's a writer's that's trick. Just, time is just happening. Okay, well, um, all right, what about this one? The scene where we watch two characters walk into a house and they realize they need something fr from a different house and then they immediately leave that first house and we do a separate scene? Right. Yeah, well, we uh -huh. have to establish that there are multiple houses. That there are multiple houses in the world? In this world. It's a work of fiction, Heath. You have to. Yeah, I, I can tell by how many your... people want to have sex with you in it. What? Nothing. Just go ahead. So oh, are we done then? Uh, I guess so. Yeah. Good. Now, are you sure your mom doesn't want to have sex with me? Well, I mean, I've been like asked her but that's what i thought okay and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to start this one off with a dedication to chip rossetti's band director i guess which was sweet yeah i like that this i my first note was like oh dedicated to band director of high school and they specifically mentioned we lost every football game but we had way better music than the other team every time and i was like this is a great start this is the story of my, my high school band nerd career great Right on. All downhill from there. Right. I, <laughs> I was also charmed until we saw the band director character later on. And Ooh. I was like, oh, wait. So you think this was a good director? And he spoke to you like that? <laughs> well, all right. Okay. Oh, you'd be amazed the, th the number of things that that man thinks about himself. This is, again, the third movie we've watched that he wrote. So, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So. And my first note, by the way, is the music just started like it was mad at me. Uh, my music note, okay, I, that's weird because I know we heard the same thing. And I heard Over the Pants love song. So that's strange. <laughs> 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 All right. So we get the credits. We get the opening song. And we meet a group of high school girls that are basically just standing around picking on the one girl who's a virgin for being a virgin. Yes, which does not happen in real life, which I, I watched it with my partner. I told him several times, me, uh, you know, being, having been a girl in high school, uh, nobody does that. <laughs> so no one stupid. has ever done that. It, Obviously, you've uh, never been to the big cities of South Dakota. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, riddle me surprise, you know, like, touche, <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> but yeah, the way that women talk to each other in this movie is very dystopian. It's like he's going out of his way to make sure they never... Past the Bechtel test. Yes. It, yeah. it, it's so, yeah, basically all of these girls line up around Sherry. That's going to be our main character and go, virgin, virgin, virgin. virgin. And she runs away in shame. Or, or no, I'm sorry. Wait, they tell her that they've got a guy all lined up for her to have sex with so she can shed that nasty virginity of hers. Yeah. This is a thing that never happens to boys in high school from my experience. <laughs> yeah. I've never been chosen. Yeah. 
to be the virginity tape. No, never. Nobody ever helped with that. It took a long time. A lot of failed efforts. Yeah, I tried so hard to lose my virginity in high school, and uh, there were zero takers. So I immediately do not relate to anything that this film has to offer. Absolutely. Again, I didn't go to I didn't go to high school in South Dakota either. So it's a whole different world. But. Yeah, right, right. Well, and you know what? I'm so old they didn't we didn't have email back in my day. That's why I was I was never in a situation like this. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah the email's gonna be an important part of this plot in a second, weirdly <laughs> enough. Because that's how the kids get in touch these days, you see. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> MySpace me. What? Yeah. <laughs> you have a MySpace? All right, so but As Heath has already alluded to, we're going to continue this conversation, but in a different scene, right? It's the same (laughs) dynamics, except for now they're making fun of her for being a virgin in a different place as as she's coming out of class or something. And then this is where we meet Becky, the chick that's just dying to punch Judy, the bully girl in the face the entire movie. Mm. Yeah, which is weird because they are equally mean to each other. Like, I, I titled her Slutty Girl, the but I really... Judy. She's, yeah, yeah, I love Judy. She's my favorite character. I root for nice. her the whole She's way. awesome. Judy's she awesome. She wins at the end, too, and it's fan-fucking-tastic. We'll <laughs> yeah, it's great. But also, the so, like, the funky girl, yeah, who wants to punch Judy in the face, she's just as mean to Judy as Judy is to her. Like, they are both bullies in the situation throughout the whole movie. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I would have had... Well, it's because they're not Christian. That's true. Yeah, right. No, That's you're right. right. That's You're right. right. They do become Christian eventually, and that all stops. <laughs> I couldn't take notes on their like characters or personalities or anything. All I have is, wow, the undampened concrete echo of this goddamn audio <laughs> sounds great, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, listen, like, honestly, you expect better of this podcast, and you should. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, can we talk really quick about the speaking ability of these <laughs> um I'm going to say human beings but I'm not sure these people quote people they talk like alien robots with bad AI it's like <laughs> it's like they're reading a ransom note with the cut out magazine words as best they can it sounds crazy I, I had in my notes if you told me they were these were all French people reading English phonetically I I, I would not ask you to prove that right, right? Mm-hmm. If that was part of the IMDb trivia, I'd go like, oh, right. OK. All right. I get it now because people who speak English wouldn't be a part of this goddamn script. I get it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And one other question on this. Did I hear this correctly? Did one of them use the phrase? I'd love I think it was <laughs> Becky. Be- she, it was Becky. Yes. She's mad at Judy for being too uh, sex positive or whatever. And she says, <laughs> I'd love to stay and be the raspberry seed in your tooth, but I'm not gonna. Is that a saying? Does do people say that? South Dakota thing? I don't know. I wrote that down too because I was like, well, I was like, well, you know, having eaten raspberries, it does suck when one's in your tooth, but never in my life have I heard a person say that out loud. So yeah, that's a, <laughs> it's a big metaphor to bring to the table. I feel like maybe Chip Rossetti <laughs> was having like a serious raspberry issue while <laughs> I, with this or something. I don't know. No, that that explains it exactly, right? They're sitting there writing that, and Donald James Parker, or James Donald Parker, whatever his name is, had a raspberry seed in his tooth in that moment. And he's like, "What's an annoying thing?" You oh, keep I got doing it. that. I got it. Do you hear I that noise it. you keep making? We've been <laughs> writing for hours together. You keep doing that. Just get a floss, get a toothpick. Jesus. <laughs> Or he thinks he's Shakespeare, you know, making up phrases on the fly. That was definitely <laughs> yeah, oh. sick in pop culture. You know what? I think you're probably right, given what we know of the man. Yes, yes, he thinks he's fucking Shakespeare. Yeah, they've written about the same number of works. Yeah. (laughs) Damn, damn. So now it's time to meet her dad, right? Who we meet yelling at her for not having his supper ready when he gets home from work. Oh, yeah. Which was I, I wrote down, uh, dad is absolutely abusive. Definitely verbally abusive. Yeah. But then later, so after the main girl, you know, becomes Christian, she cooks him dinner. And I was like, wow, (laughs) wow. Gross. That's the less, you know, she's a good Christian show. Now she cooks her father, who is verbally abusive, dinner. Of course, we have to, he has to be a mean dad so that when he becomes Christian later, 
he can be a nice dad. Like, but only by a hair, though. Yeah. Even this is Christian it? actress was like, no, yeah. this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, I'm I'm 14. What the fuck is happening? Yeah. Oh, and okay, so she runs off from me and dad and she hugs her pillow. And just so, you know, that we could subtly introduce this fact, she looks directly at the camera and says, oh, dead mom, why did you have to die of cancer? <laughs> oh, it's also, uh, can I, it is a, uh, it's a pillow pet, not just a regular pillow. Oh, it's okay. A really? Unicorn pillow pet. Yes. Uh, <laughs> which is a, that is a toy for children. <laughs> How the fuck did I miss that? Uh, I don't know. I yeah, that's so, perfect. Something that doesn't exist on it. Perfect for this movie. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now we are going to meet. I I would call this almost the star of the movie, which is the engine for the school bus. Oh my god! Right. We hear more <laughs> of that goddamn engine than we hear of any of the characters in the film. So every time we have to have a scene where. Duke, the, the male lead, and Sherry, the female lead, chat. They always do so on a school bus, which we always open with an establishing shot of a school bus and, <laughs> and, a, and a director slash editor that doesn't realize you could use different audio than the audio that was on the fucking microphone <laughs> on the side of the camera when you film that fucking school bus. Like, we were going to be confused if they just started talking. Like, what the fuck are these benches? Are they in a large truck <laughs> that's moving children somewhere? What is happening? There are several, like, they have a whole scene where you watch every single person exit the bus. Uh, you see about five people slowly walk out of the bus and then walk on to the, and then, like, the, and then the, finally the lead comes out. It's like, what? Why in the world yes. did we need to see this? <laughs> Why? We spent like two minutes watching them all walk out of the bus going, yes. what's going on? Why, <laughs> Why are we watching what's happening? So cut? Or are we just <laughs> still so we doing this? Cut. Oh, so and, so, and, and everyone, I should say, because this is their little meet cute, right? This is where Duke and Sherry first meet. And he's like, hey, is this seat taken? And she's like, it's very clearly empty. No. And all of the kids that are behind him on the bus are trying so goddamn hard not to look at the camera. Uh, one <laughs> fails miserably. The little girl right behind him fails miserably. Everybody else does a pretty good job of looking immediately to the left of it. <laughs> <laughs> she gets caught like a deer too, like a tractor beam deer. Just like, oh, I looked right at it. And I'm stuck forever. Yeah. I'm staring at it. <laughs> I'm stuck. Shit. I'm stuck. Am I saying this out loud in the movie? Yep. I can't look away. We'll just use the bus noise over it. <laughs> and then, okay, and then we have, I would say, a scene in any sane movie, but no, a series of scenes in three different locations in this fucking one where fucky girl Judy, the bully that was making fun of her for being a virgin earlier, is setting her up with Duke's email. Because, again, that's how the kids get in touch these days is through the email. Yeah, so she's supposed to just... Email him out of nowhere. Be like, I have your email. Let's have some sex. And that's what happens. But does she chooses to do it with an anonymous email, which made no sense to me. She also like says her plan out loud. She's like, OK, well, I guess I just got to email him with a anonymous email. And it's like, what? Yes. <laughs> who are you talking to? You're by yourself. I just okay. told myself that I'm by myself. This is a weird conversation I'm having today. I'm. Third person, second, first. Uh, I'm doing them all today. <laughs> so, yeah, so she emails Duke and she's like, hi, I am a random teenage girl that wants to have sex with you on the Internet and is a random teenage girl that wants to have sex with him on the Internet. Like this movie has God in it. That's the least realistic part of the film right there. I'm just going to say it. So but he emails her back, not before we cut to another goddamn scene of her doing the dishes. Because we have to know time has gone by, right? <laughs> right. And she's like, Lou, 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 doing dish yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dish stuff's my favorite stuff. Why don't I cut from my scene to my next scene and talk to myself more? Cut. Well, <laughs> well, first, let me clomp through the goddamn house as though it was just lined with microphones I had to step <laughs> on along the goddamn way. Yeah. I think this is also the scene where there's a long shot of watching her walk from the <laughs> sink to the hallway. Yes. 
so yes. for no reason. <laughs> so that we'll know how she got back to the room she was in in the last <laughs> fucking scene. <laughs> They should have just had her, like, uh, hold a ball of string for the whole movie and just watch it all build up. The visual grammar of this movie is for toddlers. It is like... <laughs> oh. <sighs> and, and then we should... Okay, so then we she gets this email from this kid where he schedules the sex having. Right, and one little detail on this. We see her computer screen for a second when she's sending the email. And it's clearly Chip Rossetti's computer or Donald oh, yeah. James Parker's computer. And I love that there's an ad for some kind of terrible online business degree. At the <laughs> of oh, <it>. no. <laughs> what a sad little story <laughs> hidden within this sad yeah. fucking so story. Dark. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, like the David Lynchian layers that this, yes. this piece has to offer. Oh, uh, if I could just watch James uh, Donald Parker being like, with like some sad, dark song in the background. There's one <laughs> light bulb over his head. He's in his house. <laughs> University of Phoenix. I need an MBA. My movie thing's not doing it. All right. So wait, no, it's the next day. Um, Judy has showed up to talk with Sherry about penises in vaginas as they do. Mm -hmm. And she so this is where they start shitting on birth control, right? This movie is a series of terrible, terrible messages. This is, I think, our first where she says, hey, have you stopped by the school nurse and given out and gotten a condom? And Sherry goes, the school nurse gives out free condoms. Why, if it weren't for that, I wouldn't be so tempted to be sexually active. <laughs> yep. Beep, boop, bop, boop, beep, <laughs> beep, beep, beep. <laughs> France, we're from France, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this whole scene is just this, like, super sad, ignorant political cartoon. Like, and they're characters in a political cartoon that moves a little bit. <laughs> and Judy's like, well, actually, yeah, the nurse gives out condoms now. Thanks, Obama. And Sherry's like, well, shouldn't the teacher, you know... Teach us that sex is terrifying and wrong. Thanks, Betsy DeVos. Like, it's so <laughs> transparent and direct. It's so bad. <laughs> then Becky comes by, runs Judy off. Becky, the um, the virgin positive girl, I guess. I don't know how you want to describe her. And she's like, Sherry, I don't know how to tell you this. And then she just pauses a really long time because it's clear that she forgot her line and really doesn't know how to tell her this. <laughs> It was yep. a great little meta moment. I just, I, I had fun with it. I think they used the phrase, eat a rock here too. This is another one of those raspberry in yep. the teeth things. Yeah. Very yep. confusing. What's the mm -hmm. thing you wouldn't want to eat? Rock. Good. You're good at this, oh, man. Oh, we're done brainstorming. We're, we settled on rock? Yeah, okay. we settled on rock. It's going in. <laughs> Cut said, we wrote it down. Forward. Oh, you wrote it down. All right. You're using pen? <laughs> yes, you're using pen. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so... Do you want to learn to cut and paste on this thing? I thought not. <laughs> I thought not. I got a virus from phoenix.com. It's actually .edu. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> now we're uh, we're back on the bus. We have to have that scene where Duke chats with Sherry about how much he now regrets having made fuck plans with some anonymous girl on the internet instead of pursuing a meaningful relationship with her. Yeah, um, it's, well, if, if you're going to introduce the scene, first you should say, and then you say <laughs> otherwise, how will people know this takes place on a bus? It's right? on a bus, yes. everybody. That's true, that's true. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this is the part where I, so I, like, my brain was having, it was, like, pushing through sludge to try to keep up with the, mm -hmm. the plot, quote unquote, because I, <laughs> on first glance, did not realize that he is the, both the guy that she is emailing and her, like, current crush, which is odd because he's about to be, like, our star Christian good boy, but he was the fuck guy who was, like, willing to fuck any girl. Just some that, random right. chick from the internet. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, yeah who the fuck knows? Oh, so, well, he yeah. hasn't rejected his atheist mother yet. I feel like that's his story, uh, arc, right? Right? Oh, I think you're right. Because okay, he's that, got a Christian tracks, dad and an tracks. atheist mom we find out about. Right. And he doesn't, like, you know, get the mom arrested for being atheist or whatever he does at the end. Of <laughs> <laughs> yet. Yeah. Yet. Yeah, exactly. Spoilers. All right. So then, okay, yeah. So it's time for Sherry to get off of the bus and go walk up uh, to her, her booty call. 
but he doesn't like Chip Rossetti doesn't really trust his audience to understand that she had to walk a considerable distance unless we watch her walk a considerable distance. Oh, again, mm-hmm. the string would have been so good here. Just <laughs> out good. String. All right. I need another one. Cut. She's got different sizes of a spool each time. So, so yeah, she eventually shows up at Duke's house and she's like, hi, I'm the anonymous chick that came to fuck you. And he's like, really? We're, we're pulling the trigger on that right now. Then why even have it in the movie? Why would we do the anonymous thing if we were going to just undercut it immediately afterwards? I think that is also what confused me because I was like, wait, but she just, so what was the point? I don't know. I got it. Why would they do that? They have a conversation here being like, this movie doesn't make sense, does it? (laughs) They do. They do. We should change the plot now because it's early. (laughs) So. So let's start having sex now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, exactly. They have this very transactional. Shall we now have the sex discussion? And they're like, so how does sex start? And she's like, I think uh, you hug me and I cry. And he's like, oh, this is not God. I don't know what you saw, but this was so upsetting. Yeah. Oh, God. First thing that happens, sad. they hug and she's literally weeping almost right away. And I was like, well, I'm walking out. Damn it. It's not a theater. <laughs> <laughs> I have to walk out this of my, my room apartment. into a different part of my apartment for Spike yeah. here. Oh, man. Like, the the level to which, uh, what's his name? Chris, Chris, the guy who wrote? Chip. Chip. His name Chip. Is Chip. Chip. Yeah. The level to which Chip thinks that young teenage girls are, like, starved for any sort of, like, touch or affection or attention mm. uh, is just, a, like... It's creepy because I don't think he realizes that women give that to each other. That is why, like, women form strong, like, friendships with each other in high school because we we aren't starved for that, really. But this woman just starts weeping at, like, the lightest touch from from this, like, flute player dude. Well, I think it's because Chip Rossetti knows his audience, and if he has two girls hug, they'll be like, I would not sell them a cake. You know, so oh, he, yeah. he's, gonna, he's gonna. There'd be he's a gonna dumb pay. family <laughs> review telling everybody not to watch this movie at that point. Yeah, now. exactly. That's true. That's true. Homosexual hug. Yeah. Minute twelve. <laughs> I bet there honestly is though a dub. I didn't check, but I bet there, there is, is a I, dub I warning. It. Yeah. It's about the it's about the le- the shortness of everybody's shorts, right? Oh uh, yes, that's literally yep. part of it. Yeah. Yep. I, I, like, I wow. knew good and well. I'm like, there's the Christians don't like that. They, they can, you can see that girl's knees. Okay, so then there's a moment which, once again, how is this not self-aware, right? The, the kid, Duke, is like, well, I can't have sex with you in this meaningless fling because I have feelings for you and we're not going to have sex now. And he says to her, and I quote, this is harder than a solo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, she goes, Whoa. wait, you sing? And, and you think, tee hee, that's what she thinks he means by a solo in this, but no, he meant playing the flute <laughs> in a solo. <laughs> they were not going for a masturbation reference. I was amazed. <laughs> no, but he does this. I mean, the horribly upsetting scene for a number of reasons. There was one moment that I enjoyed. It was this actor who plays Duke trying to say the word flautist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to say, yeah. like, a dozen more times in this movie. He as close. This is as close as he gets. It gets worse throughout the movie right here. He's like, I'm a flout. It's so bad. <laughs> and, yeah. and you see her be like, you can take that one more time. No. All right. <laughs> you, you're cool. sticking with that. We're sticking with that. All right. Yep. We're sticking with yeah. everything, huh? No, I usually try things. not to laugh at, you know, speech impediments, but this, I gave myself an exception for this because <laughs> it was, it was gnar. And also he was like spitting such terrible views that I was like, I let me have this. Yeah. yeah. Literally yeah. and figuratively <laughs> spitting yeah. terrible things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, no. And this is where they learn that both of them play flute. He's first chair flautist in the school band, as a matter of fact. And then they sit there and they think, wow, talking about flute playing is way better than sex, isn't it? We should have a platonic relationship. So he walks her home. They continue this conversation in a different scene. Would we say walk, though? Um, <laughs> they move their body. They, they locomote somewhere. 
<laughs> these alien robots. Uh. Doesn't go well. Like they, everybody in this movie, they learn to walk, run, and speak like for this movie, like the night before. <laughs> No. Only kind of though, really. Well, right, right. Yeah, well. exactly. <laughs> Crash course. Yeah, so they, they 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 stumble forward. They they swing for a little bit. They swing for a second. They're like, "Wow, this is fun." My mom doesn't let me go to church. Do you believe in God? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, this is where we learn about evil mom. Exactly. <laughs> and she goes, "Well, my character is that. Uh, let's see. I my dad." Uh, doesn't like God because I have a dead cancer mom and he's sad. Yeah. Right. Well, there's always an explanation of, as to why you don't believe in God or why you you personally hate him who exists mm -hmm. for sure. So, you know. Not only is there always an explanation, but that explanation is always dead cancer mom. It's literally dead. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar at all with our weird backstory of this show. We actually have bingo cards that you can play along with watching <gasps> these terrible movies. Uh, and one of the squares is Cancer Mom. And it you will hit it every single goddamn time. It is. Here's it's right one. in the middle. We put yeah. it in the middle. You know, you might as well. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I can think of five right off the bat. Christmas shoes. That is. <laughs> yep. Yep. Dead that's, Cancer Mom. Yep. Mom uh, cancer. Uh, God's Not Dead. God's dead not Cancer dead. Mom. Yep. Yeah. No, like, uh, one of our, I need one of our listeners to tag in right now. I believe we <laughs> could sure. name approximately 229 more because we're on episode 231. Man, man. <laughs> so, oh, no. My personal favorite, by the way, is that, that TV show about uh, atheist podcaster who gets friended by God on Facebook, whose mom re miraculously recovered from cancer <laughs> oh, and then got oh, hit by a by taxi God. cab oh, and died on the no. way home. From her miraculous recovery. God friended me. That show is still going. We, we, I know. We, we, really? we reviewed the first no. episode and we were like, all right, what are the odds? This goes three episodes, five episodes. And I was like, uh, America has the worst possible taste. Ah, it's going yeah. forever. And I turned wow. out. Hey, man. Scale the Gaithers is still going after seven. So. I will say out here in L.A. when they were like advertising it, I remember a lot of people being like, well, it's like not even really about religion. It's it's just like it's not even really about that. And I was like, eh, sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think it might be. And I think it is. So. It's, it's like the people who tell you you can't really taste the grilled onions. It's like, yeah, but you like the taste. Of grilled right. You like onions. it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so okay, I'm sorry. Back to this movie. I see. I see what you're doing. I'm here, trying. Heath. I'm trying. <laughs> Maggie, get in there with some video game stuff. I don't know. Whatever. We're trying to filibuster this thing. Oh Rest of the book. Phone book. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. So we but we end the swinging scene with the boy going. Basically, wait a minute. Aren't you supposed to be doing chores like a lady? And she's like, I am. So now they're going to continue this same conversation, but walking down the road or locomoting <laughs> down the road, ambulating. <laughs> <laughs> on the words. yellow line down the middle yeah. of a street. Yes, because he doesn't know how walking works. Because they're works. aliens. Yes. They're like, oh, this is the walking line, clearly, of this <laughs> cemented area of Earth normal <laughs> so, walking. Well, wait. Here's how much they don't understand how shit works. She's walking to her house, so they pass her dad driving to her house the other goddamn way. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Yeah. What yeah I didn't either. <laughs> Whoa. I was just doing a and circle. I know where our house is. It's the other end. I was <laughs> <not> stupid. <laughs> so, yeah. So dad sees her with the boy. He, she runs. He runs the boy off. She gets in the car. And then we learn that Chip Rossetti doesn't know how to film a scene in a car where the car's moving. So, <laughs> so they just sit there and have this conversation in the car for a really long time without going anywhere. We don't have any audio of this car. We can't really go anywhere. People want to <laughs> yeah. uh, They'll never know that it's moving. So we can't yes. have that. We don't, in a bus, there's just another seat I can sit in. Damn, I don't get it. So, <laughs> so okay. So she tells her dad, her dad's pissed because she was with a boy. And he says, look, I've got to go out of town. And now that I can't trust you with your own hymen, I have to get you a babysitter. There's an old lady that lives next door. Right. And, and then we meet the old lady next door. I thought that neighbor lady next door was only going to be in this scene because she's so very uncomfortable in front of a camera and delivering lines. Like even in comparison to the other actors in this film who seem to be here voluntarily, at least. 
Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, I did wonder if she was chained to the chair at several moments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does she need help? Blink twice if you're listening, actress who played whoever, <laughs> Mrs. McAllister. <laughs> okay, so now we listen to her clearly not know how to play the flute. Now, I'm not, I don't want to mean to pick... <laughs> Right, like, because she probably didn't tell anyone she could play the flute. They probably told her three days beforehand that her character was a flautist, and this is as good as she could do in three days. <laughs> oh my god, I could hear my mom screaming in my head as I'm watching this. <laughs> my, my mom is a music teacher, specifically a flutist. She like is a very, oh, is she? That's her thing. That's her number one instrument, and she was she was furious. I didn't talk to her about it, but she was furious somewhere in New York. About me watching this. <laughs> Somehow, metaphysically, that was happening. Like, so many things were going wrong. Couple, just uh, top of my head, quick notes on flute. They cannot make noise when you're breathing in. That would be impossible. <laughs> that makes no wow. sense. Uh, and the notes change when you press stuff. That's what the buttons do. Oh. They would change the note. Yeah. Oh, it was so goddamn bad. The miming and the flute playing was so fucking bad. And and but then wouldn't you know it? Old neighbor lady is like, actually, I am a goddamn champion flautist, uh, you know, with a London Philharmonic or something. Here's my flute. Allow me to play it well for you from off camera. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> she she tells her. That it was her her song was flat and no it wasn't it was sharp that's fine <laughs> <laughs> no, it, wasn't. it it seems like uh, I don't know this you know concert flautist would maybe mention that you don't put the entire flute inside your mouth that would be her first <laughs> note but no she just says something wrong about pitch uh, and then she takes out her flute and plays impossibly well slightly yeah, so off camera but they show our uh, they show us her fingers just barely. And they're to compl they don't correspond to note change. No, again. no, 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 not at all. We do see no. her Har Harley Davidson throw pillow, though, which I <laughs> <laughs> wow, <laughs> dang, because we're still at Chip Rossetti's house. And then she offers, you know, she, to be Sherry's flute tutor. She's like, you know, now snatch this lip plate from my mouth. The movie has a plot. Now get it. And and Sherry tells her that she wants to become first chair flautist in the band because she wants to show up that boy that she likes and and even the character here gene the old lady is like wait you want to you like him so you want to take over his I, this this makes no fucking sense and she's like i know but work with me it's in the script yeah, I know. I just can't. I, I don't know how to justify this. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so just uh, can we cut to uh, praying or something? Remind the Christians that this is a Christian movie. You know what you're all. just like a fucking raspberry seed, man. You're being a raspberry seed again. <laughs> yeah. Just stuck in my goddamn tooth. <laughs> so. But then we we have to have the seed again. This is, you know, fucking classic Christian movie bingo stuff here. We have to have the scene where she prays some Jesus into Sherry, right? This is the point where I guess Sherry rededicates herself to Christ. Ugh. Yeah. This is also where the volume just gets aggressively loud all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was, I forgot to say earlier when they were, when uh, Sherry's on the swings and uh, the hot date was like, um, so do you go to church? And she does that phrase that I hate where she's like, well, I was saved when I was eight. Like, oh yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and like I had to re-remind myself like what she meant by that. I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, because that's like you you know, oh yes, because it's a cult. <laughs> what does she mean by that? I had the same note, I, I, but my note was just like saved at eight. What? What would that even mean when you're eight? Uh, is that like so? Like she grew up not religious, and then at eight years old, she like joined the so, church, and so like you're you know you're like saved. I don't know. No, it's it's this whole fucking brainwashing thing that they <laughs> she do, right? Was like because an she atheist was, seven year old, all yeah. Skeptical. I was like, what? What are you? Yeah, no, no. This is what they do. They take kids that are already Christian, and then they say, but you gotta you know accept the love of Jesus and 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 say I accept Jesus into my heart voluntarily, and you can't do that when you're a certain age. You know, you're too young to know what you're doing. So you have to reach 
eight. Whatever comes right before the re- age of reason. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. The, <laughs> the, the cusp of the age of reason. And once you're eight years old, yeah, or, or whatever it is, then you say that you let Jesus into your heart and, and they tell you that you're changed and they treat you different for like a day and a half. And they, and they you know, so you get all swelled up with pride because everybody in the church is so proud of you for doing something that didn't require any actual effort. So that's what she's talking about. That happened to her when she was eight. But now she must rededicate her life to Jesus, which happens right now. Uh, right. Which, by the way, is an admission that the whole saved thing doesn't actually work. Right? Right. Like, even in their own fucking movie, five years later, she's like, yeah, but I kind of forgot about this shit. Like I will about this purity ring in about a year and a half, too. You know? So anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Also, was um Mrs. McAllister reading... The book of Genesis in this scene? She, she was. She was. She, she's just like, Bible, page one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I'm going to check out this. Uh, oh, it was good. It says it was good. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite verse. Let's go to my favorite verse. Uh, it is the first verse. Um, <laughs> yes, right. Genesis 1. There one. was the word. In the uh, beginning. Yes. Yeah, so... <laughs> also, was she wearing a uh, kendo gi and hakama at this point? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was. She is. Was Her she doing a lot of sword, sport sword fighting right before this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So they, they pray together. And the next day, Sherry goes to school. She's talking with Duke. And Duke says, like, huh, you seem different. Are you more religious or now? And she's like, I am. I've been religioning very well. You know, that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy the very start of this scene when they tried to walk through the doorway together? <laughs> that was my favorite. They learned about doorways today, too. I don't know how, like, the spatial dimensions work on their alien robot planet, but, like, they learned today. They were this many days old, today days old, when they learned, like, okay, one at a time on the door. They'll get it wrong one more time in the movie. <laughs> Well, I think, honestly, they probably asked Chip several times, can we do one at a time? He's like, no, you come in together because you're a couple now. So, but yeah, they're they're standing there talking about how much more Christian she is. And then damn it, if Judy doesn't come by to heckle them for their virginity. Damn, Judy. This is the point where uh, Duke goes off and he goes like, uh, you know, we could become non-virgins whenever we want, but you'll never be a virgin again, Judy. So we're better yeah. than you. Ugh. That's uh, that's the big. I mean, there's a uh, very, very many plethora of slut shaming. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was that was a thick, heavy layer one. Yeah. Like I said, this uh, movie is filled with poisonous. terrible, terrible messages. Uh, but the whole the, but the slut shaming, your purity is your virginity is your value is definitely the king amongst them. Right. And yeah. this was the, 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 the message here is like, yeah, we can fuck whenever we want. You can never be clean again. Yep. But I wanted her to be like, well, can I just get reborn through Christ? Don't you guys? Fuck. Fuck. Yes. Hey, don't use our thing. Don't use our thing. Open it around. <laughs> So, but yeah, but this is where the, the two of them commit to each other to be proudly virginal together, right? And you can tell that at least one of them is really disappointed that the other one said yes, right? <laughs> but I yes. guess now that we know we can leave these two alone for a few minutes, we'll take a quick break, but we'll be back soon with more exciting not having sex. Hey, Heath, how'd you like the Christmas gift I sent you? Um... Uh- it's good. It's good. Yeah, you sent me cash. Well, uh, how much did you like it? Oh, um, I, I liked it that many dollars worth. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Has this ever happened to you? Do you have friends who suck at getting you gifts? Do you want better gifts without going through the hassle of getting all new friends? Do you like getting stuff, but you get paralyzed by the overwhelming choices anytime you're called on to pick a single item for purchase? Then you'll love the monthly box of awesome from Bespoke Post. It's a box full of guy stuff that you can get regardless of your gender because it's awesome. So whether you're looking to commemorate an occasion with a champagne saber or toast perfectly aged winter cocktails, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. Let's see, grooming, drinking, eating... Sometimes being outside, that is every part of your life. I told you, it is. So to get started, 
Take the quiz at boxofawesome.com so they'll know which box of awesome is right for you. They release new boxes every month in a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Each box costs only 45 bucks but has over $70 worth of gear inside. And the best part is you get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code AWFUL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code AWFUL for 20% off your first box. Box of Awesome. Seriously, it's it's really cool stuff. You should check out their website. They sent me a bag. It's it's fancier than any bag I've ever had. And I, I just walk around with it with, you know, <laughs> fake stuff in it. Just be like, here's my bag of things. It is really nice. I, I think I got a really cool knife from them because I went, I went outdoorsy <laughs> stuff. You, you went with the knife one. Nice. It was awesome. It's really, I don't know if you saw it. It was very cool. <laughs> You know, when you support god-awful movies on Patreon, you get a lot more than just early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You also get the legal liability that comes with knowing that you are, in some small way, financially responsible for all the stuff Eli says. But to make up for that, we also give our patrons an extra secular review episode every month. This month, we tackle the film already being hailed as the worst of the year and possibly the worst of the decade and possibly the worst of any decade, Cats. Just listen to what you're missing. So let's talk about Cats the Musical. It's a goddamn nightmare. My eyes are burning. Oh, God, my eyes. Is that (laughs) better or worse than salted wine? I would say worse. (laughs) This was baffling to me. (laughs) It's insane. Uh, Nothing makes sense. Nothing is making any sense. Oh, this is complete nonsense. Dame Dame Judy Judy Dench Dench is in this movie. Oh, my God. Majesty. This is for my stupid job. <laughs> my journey as a movie reviewer is Congratulations complete. on that. Yeah, thank that's, you. That's exciting. So if you'd like to hear our full review of Cats, sign up at Patreon today. Patreon.com slash godawful. Pledge as little as a dollar an episode, and you'll get immediate access to this month's bonus episode, plus 42 more episodes of Patreon-only material. Pledging to this show on Patreon. We watched Cats for you. Or Eli and Heath did anyway. And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to open up on Sherry waking up to a church invite from Gene, the old neighbor lady flautist. Oh, right. yeah. Gene is right. Mrs. McAllister. Yeah, yeah Gene. Yeah. Yes. yes that's, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> the scene starts <laughs> with with Gene trying to do a little space work for a second. Oh, my God. Christian space work. It's been too long, man. She is terrified. (laughs) She has three seconds of like a fake, you know, making scrambled eggs below below the frame. She doesn't even have to like do anything more than slightly (laughs) move her arms. Let me move this pot from the left (laughs) burner to the right burner and then back to the left burner. Oh, my God. Why hasn't she come in the room? She's sticking the spatula in her eye. What happens next? Why have you not entered yet? (laughs) There's someone off screen just holding a gun to her head. (laughs) Yes. That's it. She was tapping out SOS with that fucking pan and we didn't notice. That's what it is. (laughs) All right. So now uh, dad comes back into the movie. He comes to pick Sherry up from... Mrs. McAllister's house. I um, mean, he's like, how much do I owe you? And she's like, I am a Christian and therefore demand no money for loving your daughter. Yeah. Well, fuck, <laughs> someone's going to watch that and then not pay their babysitter. Because right? they're like, well, I just kind of, I just kind of assumed that you were a Christian and you would just like fucking take it. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. This is terrible. Chip Rossetti doesn't pay anyone who works for him. That's my <laughs> right. Takeaway. Yes, exactly. That's, that was him <laughs> sending a message to all the actors, yeah. that part in the script. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Oh, God. <laughs> like, stop being so transparent. At least like try to disguise yourself, Chip. That is so disgusting. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's like it's like bad ideas spackled together with other bad yeah. ideas. It's so amazing. They go like, uh, she's like, well, you know, I took your daughter to church. That's why she's so pleasant right now. And he goes, what kind of church does she attend? And I wanted so bad to just get in there and cut in a Muslim one and then send it back to ChristianCinema.com. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. But no. So he goes to like, I don't know. They have this. Father, daughter, I'm going to talk shit about you going to church conversation. Yeah, that was weird, right? 
I mean, it's all, they're all weird, but that was a, that was a particularly, she was like, I just, or he was like, what makes it different than the old church? And she was just like, I don't know. It just like, it felt like people really meant it. I was yeah. like, <laughs> what? What? No, like real Christian, like, rrr, yeah. rrr, like real. Yeah. Yeah. Not like those fucking filthy Anglicans. Right. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> we're <a> Methodist. <laughs> yeah. Weird oh. flex, but uh. okay. Yeah. Calling the kettle black a little bit there, man. <laughs> yeah, but, so. uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Also, I couldn't really see this scene because of the giant bouquet of flowers, the comically huge bouquet of flowers on this table. <laughs> it's sitting right in between the two characters. I, that, like, that had to be a prank by the set people just being like, <laughs> yeah. all right. I bet we could get like an like a like a ficus. What do you think? Like a Christmas tree on that table? <laughs> I bet we could get an elm. I'm going to get an elm tree onto that table. <laughs> Okay, and now it's time to meet. And this is like this is like Norm coming in of a Chip Rossetti movie, right? This is the time we meet Donald James Parker. He was the star of Gramps <laughs> Goes to College. Donald James um, Parker! Norm. <laughs> yeah, he's in every one of Chip Rossetti's movies. He's the one who writes most or all of them. And in every single one, by the way, this is so amazing. This is four for four now. There is always at least one woman who desperately wants to fuck his character in every one of the movies that he writes. So he will be playing the band teacher in this film, right? So when we meet him right after Sherry has had her flute audition. Yeah, he's, I hate this. I, this character oh, God. is so <laughs> disturbing. He, his, the look in his eyes shakes me to my core. <laughs> And I, well, growing Never up, look I directly had, into the eyes of these yes, movie characters. Never. Yeah. Oh, oh, should have warned it's you. It's soulless. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit skipping ahead here, but she outperforms the girl sitting next to her. And then, you know, like a normal person, she feels a little bit bad about it. She has feelings for, you know, another person who is feeling sad. And then this crazy teacher is like, oh, you don't need to feel bad. You are better. So therefore, you don't need to feel anything. In fact, you win. And it was just like, yeah. holy shit. Yeah. Flute is a zero-sum game. Be happy. Yes. Be excited. Yes. What? Oh, so, well, yeah, he, he from the very beginning, he sets this whole thing up. He's like, all right, here are the stakes of this film. And I do mean this seriously. You are only the eighth best flautist in the school. You must challenge each flautist before you, beyond you, to reach number one. There will be a mirror match at the end. Kareem uh, Abdul-Jabbar will have a flute and fight you. <laughs> There's a bit with a fiddle. It's it's going to get rough, but you're going to go through seven mini bosses before you fucking fight the main boss. Donald James Duke, Parker starts flashing orange while they're playing... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so yeah and by the way there there is a moment here and again it, it, apologies maggie i think you have to have seen four movies to truly get why this is so goddamn funny but there's a moment here where donald james parker lectures somebody about humility Oh, no. Oh, my God. Right after we reveal that he's the secret love of Jean, the old neighbor lady who she's pined for her entire life. Oh. Right? With a little tuba reveal. Right. Oh, gross. <laughs> gross. Yes. Gross. It's so bad. Uh. All right. And then we get uh, the scene where Sherry wants to go to church, but dad wants to go watch football and hang out at alcohol distribution centers that humans like. <laughs> <laughs> like us, us humans, like. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> this, I couldn't stop laughing at this point. There were a few fun moments, actually, now that I think about it. This was one of them. <laughs> he's supposed to be watching TV, and he's convinced that he needs to do so much physical work with this remote control. <laughs> he will not let it go. He will not stop moving it around. He's doing it two-handed, one-handed. He's doing tricks with it. It's, he gets so distracted by this one stage direction. Like, oh, use the remote for a second. And he was like, I got this. 
And he's eating. Are you eating it? <laughs> You're eating it right now? We didn't even start. He's, okay. He's mm-hmm. sending texts back from the hit one three times for C days and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yana. I think this is also the moment where he is wearing a plaid shirt and the couch is plaid. Yeah. So it's a double plaid <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> uh, Just a floating head. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> And uh, there's also, again, this is the, especially knowing how autobiographical this work is. This is such a sad line when she says to her dad, you know, being in band and trying to be a better flautist has really given my life purpose. Oh, no. <laughs> so sad. Oh. <laughs> also, University of Phoenix offers some great programs. There's a lot of things to live for. <laughs> Doing great. All right. So, yeah, and then uh, she gets invited to the church's youth group. Uh, it turns out that the church youth group is about to have a whole big not having sex ceremony that's scheduled for act three. Scheduled for act three. <sighs> I, I also I love there because th- this is the exactly how the exchange goes. Jean says, you know, Sherry, you should come to the church's youth group. They're going to have a whole big thing about remaining a virgin and to which Sherry says immediately, oh, I don't think my dad would like that. <laughs> what? Yeah. He wants me to be I need a- more information, Sherry. Put in more information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad wants me to be a secular virgin. It's important to him. <laughs> That's what? it. Oh, yeah. It's the church, not the virginity that dad's yeah, and- uh, not about. But I think she also, and then I think she asks, well, why wouldn't your father want you to be a virgin? And it's like, why are yeah. any of you talking about any of this, actually? <laughs> yeah, why didn't, I think that's a better Why didn't question. you just fix the line <laughs> yeah. when you realized that's what you just had the girls say? <sighs> Again, they have that virus from phoenix.com. They can't copy or paste or anything. So <laughs> once it's written in the doc, God damn it, it's got to stay. <laughs> James, you know we can cut. Also, just unplug the router or something. I don't know. Ten seconds. What's happening, man? <laughs> <laughs> so and then we set this whole thing up where it's like okay well i'll tell you what i'll cook for your dad if you know he'll let you go pledge your hymen to jesus so they they agree on that deal so we have to have this scene and this is to me this is the high point of the movie i apologize to the listeners for not having the timestamp on this there's a moment before dad walks in <laughs> This is the yeah, best start to yes, scene. Yes, where Sherry and Jean have to say <laughs> three unscripted words to each other. It is so good. I watched it four goddamn times. <laughs> All they come up with, by the way, one of them is like, yes, yes, one of them's like, how's... And the other one waits, being like, oh, you're probably going to say something after how's. <laughs> no? Good. 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 To which, good. Yes. Good. Good. Yes. The good. Good. Where are we starting? Good. Oh, yes. Yeah. Good. Uh. It was so amazing. <laughs> they just stand there going, good, good, good. 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 And then the dad Say goes. how's again. Let's mix it up. <laughs> Why are we whispering? Oh, my God. It was amazing. But yeah, so dad comes in and they, they're going to eat or whatever. And this is dad comes in and he's like, oh, hey, Gene McAllister, my neighbor who's taking care of my daughter for me for free. Thanks for making all this food. Are you staying to eat or just making me food and leaving? <laughs> <laughs> That's his actual question. Is it? I was still laughing about the good, 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 good. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. And this, this is where we learn she's making chicken cordon bleu. By tearing up a head of cabbage. (laughs) It's a complicated recipe. So, and then we cut to immediately after her first flute battle, right? And we just cut to two kids putting down their flutes (laughs) and uh, Donald James Parker going, that was a very interesting display of fluting that just happened. And then he announces that, that Sherry has won and this poor girl who is already being told she was the seventh best flautist in school has to now admit that she's the eighth best flautist in school. It's a sad Maybe moment. not even. There might be other people who haven't, you know. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, because we've heard That's Sherry true. play. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is, this is the moment, uh, Maggie, that you were talking about where he just starts yelling about, like, 
Walk it off. You're fine. Yell in her face. Whatever. Flute is serious. Get serious. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah. I just like, in what world does that make him a good teacher? And like, you think this is good, Chip? So like, how do you talk to people when <laughs> right. you're trying to like, you think you're fostering kindness? I don't know. It was. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. He can't even, he doesn't even know what nice person lines would sound I, like for the purposes of a script. It's amazing. Oh. And we do get the amazing line here where. Oh, <laughs> Donald, yes. The one I want to carve onto his fucking tombstone. Oh. <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah. Donald James Parker says to her in during this rant about being more competitive as a flutist, he's like, listen. Pride and mediocrity can coexist. I am the maker of the movie oh. Love Waits. Oh, no. Some guy that, Noah oh, is carving no. this on my tombstone that I almost that, have. That, I don't know what's happening. Do you think that is from a review of one of his past movies? <laughs> that was like, That's got to be a title of a review. And he was like, oh, really? Well, I'm going to fucking use oh. this right back in your face. Pride it does, and it does a roll. Off the tongue, though, doesn't it? So, I don't yes. know what those words mean, but I'm going to use them. <laughs> that two second clip sums up his career as a filmmaker entirely. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. <laughs> I just want him to have like tattoos on his knuckles, like Cape Fear, that say pride and mediocrity. <laughs> So while you're doing that tombstone thing, get on a little knuckle tattoo if you get a chance. Yeah, so I'll see what I can do. All right, so and now we reach the whole point of the goddamn movie, okay? This makes the whole movie, this next scene makes the whole movie worth watching. This is the meat, this is the potatoes, this is the fucking spinach dip, it's the whole, the dessert, Pure everything. evil. Yeah. I love this so goddamn, okay, so we'll get there. We have to open the scene up because apparently Chip Rossetti learned his lesson about asking his actress to vamp for a second. <laughs> He just, Before he somebody just comes in, it. it's just muted. Here. Well, it's not even muted. They're moving because I know because I can hear their lips smacking as they move their mouths as though they were talking. Oh, he just told them to be like mouth, 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 mouth. Yes, yes. Wow. They're just mouthing <laughs> word, 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 and we can hear them as they're yeah. doing it. It's so good. Oh, I thought this was just these two girls being like, all right, we've done really badly with these opening scenes so far where we had to do anything before somebody shows up. Let's just lip sync until Duke gets here. Plus, you know, let's not break the Bechdel covenant and he's not here yet. So yeah. there we go. <laughs> yes. So, but yeah, but this scene though is this is where Duke, Becky, and Sherry, and all of the named characters except Judy are all going to go to the Pledging Your Perpetual Virginity class. And we're going to have this, uh, the youth group leader, tell them all about the dangers of sex and how evil condoms are. And it's just a litany of bad ideas, one after the other after the other. Right? Yeah, it really comes out. I mean, uh, most of this script feels like, uh, you know, scraps of sermons that are all pushed together. Yeah. Uh, but this is probably the most like complete sermon within the film. Oh, absolutely. From beginning to end, you know. Yeah, like this was the this was the the conversation that Chip Rossetti and Donald James Parker were writing around. They were trying yes. to get to this scene. Yeah, yeah, they started with this. They had some raspberries. They wrote a movie around it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So it starts off with the with the chick going, what's the most effective form of birth control? And little goody two shoes from Gramps goes to college goes abstinence. And I wanted so bad to be able to burst into that goddamn room like the Kool-Aid man and go, all right, what's the least effective form of sex ed? Anybody know the answer to that? This. This. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this movie. Jesus the, the fucking teacher, she goes, contrary to some media reports, nobody gets pregnant from abstaining. What media reports are you fucking yeah. reading, lady? Uh, contrary to the New York Times, it's actually absolutely. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> yeah. Contrary to our religion, but other than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she and she's even she's she elaborates on this. She's like, and, you know, when data shows that I'm clearly wrong about the thing I just said. It's because you're all horse. That's why. So stop. Yeah, right. That, that's actually her knocking down what I just said, that that the media will tell you again and again that abstinence only education is the least form of sex ed. If you measure sex ed by like 
number of teen pregnancies, number of abortions, the, the amount of sexual activity, number of STDs, et cetera, by any reasonable by data, measure. Yeah, by counting. Yeah, stuff. right, right, yeah, exactly. By, by science, by real life, by fact. By numbers, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. So there's also this great moment where the sex ed teacher, this woman is, she's like, she's like, believe me, there will be temptations. And then she just stares in one exact spot. We don't see which kid she's staring at, but she's staring at one specific kid. And she's like, believe me, there will be temptations. Oh, she's staring at big stash. Wow. She's staring at big stash chin guy. Yeah. I was gonna oh, say. okay. She, that was pointed. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Then we have this amazing moment where like one of the kids says, but if you're married, you can do butt stuff, right? And she goes, well, or, or no, she doesn't. One of the other students starts going into this bizarrely specific instance of kink that wouldn't be okay in the eyes of God, right? She's like, well, if he wants to tie you up and handcuff you and make you wear whiskers oh, yeah. and call you George, what, what like... Madison, oh. stop! Sorry, no. So I, was like, I, was <laughs> I rewound all of Madison's lines to watch them again. She's amazing. Everybody, somebody's standing off screen going, Madison, don't tell him about that. Yeah. She's just like, oh, sorry. I, I, I was reading Bernie Sanders' essay from uh, his thing. In Vermont. <laughs> I, I got it. This is a different thing. <laughs> we, Madison is um the, the like red haired, uh, kind of like Irish looking with the freckles girl. No, no. Madison is the girl from Gramps Goes to College. The yeah, little blonde girl. She's got those. She's got those little cheeks. She's got these cheeks. These oh like, yeah, 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 okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah. But there also was that other girl who who is the the, the one that that talks about the dangers of porn. The one who knows how to speak right. words. The one person in this entire movie who could kind of <laughs> talk, and she started talking like a human, and it was like jarring to me. I was like, "What's yeah, happening was. right now?" Yes. I've been watching this for an hour and a half. This is weird. I feel so bad for the kid that gets chosen for this line because I don't know why Chip Rossetti cast him, but I know why Chip Rossetti cast him. Where they start talking about porn, and then this there's just this one sweaty kid who raises his hairy palm or whatever he goes sweaty bobby yes yeah, he goes <laughs> some people get addicted to porn just like alcohol <laughs> hey bobby you want to let go of your mom's leg and deliver the line that we no. said we agreed you would deliver no i don't I you don't know mama's leg no you want a snack <laughs> yeah what do you want? Yeah, he wants a yeah, snack yeah what apple juice you apple juice <laughs> yeah what apple juice <laughs> I have high C. No! So, <laughs> there's also this great moment where somebody goes, well, porn also makes men go crazy and, and do rapes. And the fucking youth group leader goes, yes, it's very sad when that happens. <laughs> fucking what? Yeah, that's a bummer. That's a real bummer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good wording. Uh, Jesus Christ. That was upsetting, too. And then we meet this kid who refers to himself only as Mr. Fisher. And I'll tell you what, he is too cool for that purity ring, right? That's his character. Mm -hmm. And then she, like, he's like, I'm not going to take no chastity pledge. You guys are stupid. And she's like, you know, it's important to remember as we're thinking about just freely having sex flippantly and not respecting the bounds of marriage that Satan is trying to let gay people do it. What? Oh, but yes, yes, she steps up and, and has a whole big speech about how Satan is trying his damnedest to do away with the sanctity of marriage on every front. Get what? Get every get what I mean by that? There would be gay people that could get married is what we're talking about. Oh, you know what? I honest to God missed that subtext because I mean, this whole scene is so shocking that there were there were moments <laughs> that my brain shut off. And I did not even realize that she was trying to broach that topic. I'm so jealous that your brain shut off that I should have oh, had that same defense mechanism for all these. I mean, I watched this movie twice because I was so fascinated <laughs> oh by God, it. I and watched it twice. I, yeah, I, I think both times I had a slight aneurysm during this particular <laughs> scene. Uh, so if, This was definitely the aneurysm scene, yeah. And, and believe it or not, despite all of the shit that we've talked about, it's about to get to its worst yeah, bit, right? Yeah, yeah that oh, wasn't yeah. the worst part. When, no, no when, we're not so, there yet. No, no, no. So yeah. Stash Guy starts yelling about, he's like, he's supposed to be the atheist who's forced to be at this thing by his parents. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And he's like, tell God to make me fly or else I'm watching snuff porn right now. And they're like, no, no, just calm down. <laughs> calm down. And But then the teacher's like, well, you are right that like, you know, Christian, we do ruin every party. We are the worst. 
And then the transition from there, somehow she's like, I'm going to say gay people are evil next. Yep. Uh, new thought, gay people are evil. Satan is a gay person. And that <laughs> that is, you are correct, not the worst part. It is about to get more evil than that right now. Yeah, right. So it's time for her. Like, he's like, you don't know nothing about being a teenager and having sex with uh, the opposite gender. And she says, actually, I do. And a little piano starts playing and she tells us about this goddamn story of her getting pregnant when she was 17, having an abortion, even though she didn't want to, something going horribly wrong with the abortion and her being rendered infertile for life. That's the fucking message. The message the movie is sending now is and don't have an abortion because it'll fuck you up and you'll never be right again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And she says it in this really her her entire tone. It's mm. like this. <laughs> I got pregnant. I wanted to get pregnant. Um, I'm like, being triggered. Ah! Yeah. Oh, but there is one moment, and I'm I'm hoping I'm not the only person who noticed this. Once the little piano music starts, it, after it goes for a little while, suddenly there's a sound of a stream that cuts in with it, and then the music fades away. Because what they used was the relaxing cassette tape that Donald James Parker keeps in his car from when Wendy's fucks up oh, its order. Oh, and they no. had to cut it out, and they meant to cut it out before the stream <laughs> starts going through. But they fucked it up. You're a very yeah. successful movie maker. <laughs> Your MBA is going amazing. You're very tired. Anyways, and that's my abortion. <laughs> 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 Oh, and her whole speech here is like, I got pregnant because of the exact same ignorance that I'm teaching right now. Yes, yes, yes. And like the implication that like, oh, my God, abortions are so unsafe. It like it fucked me up. Like she's. Uh, uh, yeah. No. Right. You remember in Fargo with the wood chipper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So didn't go great. It didn't go great. I mean, and, th and that's the thing, like, it, it would make more sense to have an entire industry devoted to making movies about the dangers of root canals, right? <laughs> they don't do that for some mm -hmm. fucking reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fucking raspberry seeds. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but she tells us that she's infertile and has no value as a human. And also it's her fault, right, for all the sinning and the sexing and the abortioning. Oh, absolutely. And then another girl... <laughs> Redheaded girl cuts in and goes, hey, can I still take the chastity pledge if I can my friends still take the <laughs> chastity pledge if she fucked? Yeah. <laughs> I'm asking for yeah. a for me frown. <laughs> what? That was so funny. I think she even, she says like, uh, and like not because I, I haven't, but uh, but for like if someone did have sex, is it OK? <laughs> Theoretically. <laughs> is that OK? <laughs> it's so amazing. Yeah. And the and the answer is, yeah, God gives you a clean slate. And nobody was like, oh, so I should just fuck and then take the pledge. <laughs> That's, oh my, I, well, as we were watching, I was like, all right, so every night tonight, they're going to go out and have hardcore yes. sex. Right. <laughs> and tomorrow's so a clean everybody, slate. let's get fucking busy, I guess. Yeah. We still got two weeks before this. Thing. Didn't Aquinas say, give me chastity and virtue, but not just yet? Hey, don't use fucking Aquinas on our thing. You don't, you're <laughs> flipping it again. <laughs> All right, and then we have the scene where she catches her dad making out with some lady he met at the bar. Oh, yeah. The opening shot of this, I wrote down, it It looks like the dad's head is wedged between this woman's breasts. <laughs> and I couldn't tell if that was supposed to be him. Like, they were supposed to be kissing, but then mm. he just, like, did that? <laughs> or is that Not part clear. of the story? Or if his this actor just decided to take some liberties and shove his head <laughs> into her chest, I don't know. But uh, there you go. That's the, that's the opening shot. It felt like his face was opening up like the predator, and he was going to chew <laughs> part of her body off. Was what yeah. I well, but but here's the thing: that we have this long opening shot of that where their heads just aren't matching up quite right to be making out. And they're not moving at all. It's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let go of the remote control. It's right between our faces. This is weird. <laughs> You've been holding it since we started the movie. You, you need to put it down. So, no. 
but yeah, but then uh, Sherry comes in and decides to cock block her dad because this is just some bar slut that he met, right? Yeah, yeah. He's uh, she's very disappointed in his choice of woman. I put in there like I don't know that this man can be picky, Sherry. I think that he has to sort of <laughs> take what's left over, if you know what I mean. I don't. Some people don't get married into their thirties and forties. It's just a thing that happens <laughs> to some people. Yeah. Some, but some people do. It's totally normal. Thirty eight is the new something younger. <laughs> I'm 38. <laughs> All right. And then, okay, so we have the moment. We're back on the bus, you know, because we listen to and watch the bus for a while. And this is where they hatch the plan of trying to hook dad up with the abstinence teacher at their church. Right. The youth group lady. Right, right. It, it, she's like, it was right in front of my eyes the whole time. The perfect woman. And and she says, and she says, Ariel, and we, the audience, are like, fucking who? Yes. And she goes, you know, the youth group lady teacher. And we're like, who? It's like from th three scenes ago that was telling us not to fuck the. the, the <laughs> <laughs> terrifying voice. Oh, uh, terrifying voice. Oh, Scott. yeah. Ariel. The slut yeah. who had, you know, had sex and then yeah, uh, exactly, messed exactly. up her body. The broken woman. Yeah. Yes. God hates her. Ariel. God, God hates, her. hates her. It's cursed yeah. her. You know her from the, she has the scarlet, big scarlet letter that you'd. Yeah. So, the letter yes. U for uterus is gone because that's how abortions work. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then we have this great moment. And I love this moment so goddamn much. Sherry goes to Jean, the flute player next door, and she says, you know, I'm trying to hook my dad up with a woman. And Jean is like, oh, really? I don't know if. And she's like, you know, Ariel from your church? What's her number? And she goes, oh, Ariel. is yeah, Obviously, you were talking about Ariel would be who you would be. Yeah, talking about. Of oh. course. <laughs> it was so oh. sad. Yeah. So sad. That was super mean. And she's like, yeah, so, you know, I would have set you up. Too, Jean, but you're old. Can you cook for their date? She does. Yeah. She, asks him. <laughs> she fucking does. And then leave, maybe. I don't know. Remember earlier where you stayed after you made food? That was yeah. kind of a faux pas <laughs> on your part. <laughs> you could just make it and leave. So, okay. So now it's they're getting ready for the surprise date between dad and Ariel. And there's another moment where Jean, like, is, you know, like, like a three-year-old betting you that you can't tickle them. She's like, oh, I sure hope you don't surprise set me up with a fella someday. Oh, God. So sad. She's so horny. Yeah. And it, it gets even sadder when she's just like, uh, I don't even think I need a man. And Sherry is like, well, doesn't the Bible say that you're incomplete without one and should spend your time cooking and cleaning for one? She's like, oh, well, you're right. That that is what it says mm. in this book that I just read I Genesis some... page one. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be years book before I get to Timothy at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're right and then like she's like in the background in this shot so it's even sadder because she's like kind of out of focus uh <laughs> and, it, and it's just like yeah well i guess if jesus wants that for me then um then it'll happen <laughs> and then, and then it cuts, the, cuts away <laughs> uh, a lot God. of sadness cuts in this movie yeah yeah <laughs> Well, OK, so the saddest cut for me is actually right here. So this is Ariel shows up and they have this awkward moment where Sherry's trying to close the door behind Ariel. But Ariel is standing between her <laughs> and the door and they st <laughs> they spend a second figuring out how the logistics of that are going to work. <laughs> Ariel almost gets seriously injured by the door while they're trying to like <laughs> shuffle. No, you go to your left. What? No, just in the door. What are you doing? They have to have done doors before, right? Maybe yesterday. Well, I mean, maybe that wasn't part of what they had to learn to, you know, be in the movie. They yeah, right. Walking, yeah, exactly. Talking. They're walking and oh yeah. Well, no. Let's now that now that you mentioned it, this is not the first time they've had trouble with the whole door <laughs> concept. Yeah. No, no. Uh, no, this was tough. Like they learned open doorway earlier, but now there was like this swinging yeah. thing right in the middle of it. <laughs> right, right, with a big handle on it. All right, so then. They, <laughs> this is genuinely fucking funny. This is the moment where the actors can't decide whose house they're supposed to be in right now. Some, like half the actors think it's supposed to be Gene's house and half the actors think it's supposed to be Sherry's house. And they're all referring to it differently. 
<laughs> right? Like they, they're going like, sorry, dad, we'll have to leave the dishes for tomorrow. And he's like, it's not my house, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Why would I give a fuck? <laughs> but no, I would never wash a dish. Can you imagine? Man. I have a penis. I wouldn't. What? <laughs> so, but yeah, but they, they introduce him to Ariel. They're like, here's my not having sex tutor from church, dad. You could not have sex with her. Like, I'm not having sex with her right now, but okay. And we know that dad's pretty impressed with this Ariel lady because now suddenly he wants to say a prayer before they eat. Right. And his prayer is great. It's like, dear God, great job on... um. Earth, I mean everything. Great, nailed oh. it. Amen. If I started to say something about how you killed my wife, that feels <laughs> weird. <laughs> you are mysterious. I will give you that. You are mysterious. <laughs> Your ways. You are a scamp. Are <laughs> so killed my wife. That was good. <laughs> this movie is like subtly endorsing flirty fishing to like increase numbers <laughs> of a church. It's right. so weird. <laughs> so- and then, by the way, if you thought two of them could hurt themselves trying to close the door, imagine what happens when four of them all try to sit down in chairs at once. <laughs> they do so badly and they don't cut it. They could just cut the scene. But we get to watch like 15 seconds of them being like four of us, four chairs. Who does division? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, Carry Sherry them. goes to sit in Nothing. the chair that. That Jean is about to sit in, so then she moves into the chair that Ariel's about to sit in. The dad just stands there between two chairs, just fucking deer in a goddamn headlights over the decision he now must make. So eventually we fade to fucking black with all four of them still standing. It's so amazing. All right. So anyway, so she goes off to church with Jean and Ariel and she comes home to have the conversation with dad about, huh, how about that Ariel lady, right? She's my not fucking tutor. So I figured she'd be the right girl for you, right? Yep. Uh, During this conversation, the dad, well, okay, so the, you know, Sherry's like, well, dad, I think you have to get right with God. And then her dad is like, whoa, you know, you're a big name dropper. And then she goes, (laughs) what's a name dropper? And then he, she, he, he, he explains to a 14 year old what the (laughs) phrase name dropper means in a very clinical way. Like, oh, it is when you just um, say the name of someone important to uh, get someone to do what you want. And then they can just continue the conversation. Yep. Yes. <laughs> so you know names? <laughs> That's the first you part. Know, Are you familiar with uh, the verb to drop as an infinitive? <laughs> I just like, did Chip not know what that meant? And like he was riding with someone and someone yeah. like hit. And Chip's well, like, we're going to need to explain this concept. Uh, I know what it means, but the 14-year-old girl probably doesn't. So why don't you write in? What it yeah, means. yeah, yeah. We both yeah. write it at the same Who time. You? <laughs> we either of us could could obviously write that part. Also, there's a great bit moment where Sherry does sort of an impression of the bad girls that he's hooking up with in the bars, and he's like, "Wait, how do you know how to do an impression like that?" And she's like, "Well, primetime television will make you know how to have premarital sex. It's a good thing there are things like ChipRosettiFilms.com, dot com, right?" Oh my God. Oh, she Apropos turns to camera nothing. and stops. <laughs> oh, hello. And it's a PSA. All of a sudden, there's a <laughs> rainbow going behind her. Yeah. Uh, she also, uh, Sherry, she's not the most peanut butter mouth actor, but she has a moment. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and at, the, at the end of this little conversation, she says, it's time to make up with God. And it sounds like she is saying it is time to put makeup on God. Uh, and I, I agree. I think it's time for God to be a little more gay. So oh, yeah, right. God needs to go on Queer Eye 100%. That guy oh needs a makeover. God. Absolutely. All right. Well, I guess now that we can rest comfortably in the knowledge that dad also has someone to not fuck, we can take a break. But first, let me give it Act 3 the hard sell here. Can Duke not have sex in time? Can Sherry flute well enough to reach Shao Kahn? Which of these 13-year-old <laughs> children will be stabbed in the face before this movie is over? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the abstinent conclusion of Love Waits. 
There's an answer to that last one. There is. That's a real yeah. question. The answer's not nobody. <laughs> <laughs> this is so lame. What do you know about having teen sex? Well, let me share with you a very personal story. I was a teen girl once. Uh, were you? Well, for, for the purposes of this skit, Heath, yes, I'm doing my lady voice. Okay. Anyway, when I was a teen girl, I was pressured into sex one time. And even though we had only had sex the once, I got pregnant and syphilis twice. What? And I didn't want to get an abortion, but I lived in California at the time, so I had to. That's the law there. But Is just it? when the doctor thought he was done aborting my baby, it reached out and grabbed him by the cheeks. Oh. And snapped his fucking neck like they do in the movies. I didn't think that was real, but uh. it was. He died. Anyway... That baby went on to terrorize the Planned Parenthood for days, and eventually I escaped by using my own blood to lubricate an air duct. The NSA burned that abortion clinic to the ground, but when they combed through the ruins, they didn't find any sign of my aborted fetus. They only found a hastily burrowed hole right where it was last seen. Okay. And that fetus's name? Uh Uh-huh. Joseph Stalin. What? Which is why you shouldn't have sex. This is literally not the worst argument in this movie. Nope. One of the better ones. (laughs) And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with Sherry in the bathroom at school getting bullied for not riding any penises yet. It's been a whole fucking two acts so far. So Judy re-enters the movie saying, I'm going to beat your ass for not having had sex yet. What? (laughs) This is one of those atheist sex positive school gangs that they have (laughs) in the mean streets of South Dakota. (laughs) But luckily, Becky was taking a shit just then, right? So Becky storms out of the bathroom stall to give Judy some shit. Now, we should mention, I don't want to body shame Becky, but it would be uh, it would be remiss not to point out that Becky is five times the size of Judy, right? Easily. She's thick. Like the two of them facing off. It is not easy to be sympathetic to the much larger girl talking about kicking Judy's ass. Right. But that's what yeah, happened. So the friend, is her name Becky? Yeah. So Becky, yeah. the the one thing that she says that I quoted was, uh, if I have to pray for Judy to be a Christian, then I'd rather be uh, a heathen. <laughs> right. Yep. So, yeah, I kind of, re- I really respected that. I was like, hell yeah, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> that's a tough stand to take in a <laughs> yeah, Christian movie. To take. Little do we know that she does not hold up to that, uh, to that <laughs> assertion. No. I'm not praying for that atheist. I'm an atheist now is what's happening to this character, I, which is very confusing. I, yep. Yeah. Just, <laughs> oof. Oof. Prayer-based atheism is rare. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Sherry's like, well, you know, I'm super Christian ever since kind of like late act one. Uh, so I have to forgive my enemy. So I forgive Judy. I feel like this whole conversation was just because Chip Rossetti, like, read Sid Field's book and was like, We're, we need to have a conversation into a mirror because that's deep when you talk into a mirror. <laughs> that's a cool movie thing. I Honestly, I think it was probably because he wanted to prove to somebody that, no, I do know how to film it so that you can't see the camera. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I, I can. I just like chose not to in the past, but I can <laughs> yeah, do it. Right, right, exactly. No, in that one movie, that was a creative choice. That's a camera in the bathroom <laughs> in Unrelated. They have a camera. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I honestly think that this scene exists because Chip Rossetti wanted to film in a girl's bathroom. But, you know, that's just, oh, you know, there is so many. I what I, I watched again, I watched it with my partner and throughout the movie, they kept being like, um, so you're telling me this guy wrote a movie where it's a bunch of girls talking about sex, trying to have sex. Uh, them talking about sex in the girl's bathroom, in the girl's locker room. <laughs> And yeah, that is the movie that he wrote. Yeah, and always wearing like <laughs> butt cheek length shorts every yeah. chance that he. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, it's super. Yeah. It's a super uncomfortable abstinence movie. It's yeah. such a weird juxtaposition. Did you make this partner watch the movie twice with you? Uh the, oh, okay. So the second time it was actually their idea. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, 
Yeah, oh because God. they were like, you know what? I, I I I need to figure this out, and so we watched it again the next <laughs> night. Wait, no, I respect that. That's I amazing. respect that. It's like. It's like I'm going back in for Morpheus kind of a thing. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always uh, curious to hear what somebody completely unaware, like what we're doing this podcast about this on purpose, which makes very little sense. I'm always curious to hear what the outside perspective is. Apparently, in this case, it's let's dig in there. I mean, let's really lean into this yeah. and watch it twice. Let's look yeah. for the themes. Let's look for the hidden Easter eggs in this very good writing. I mean, it's very rare that you get this masterpiece of a uh, clusterfuck car crash. <laughs> it really has all the elements. Uh, you can't look away. Yeah. yeah, no, I get that. Like, yeah, usually mm -hmm. to get this bad, it has to be self-aware. No, this movie yeah. is a lot like Crash. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's uh, just it all ties <laughs> together. Yeah. So it's equally deserving of best picture. I'll say that. <laughs> so now... We get another moment of Sherry getting bullied for all that damn virginity of hers. This is where they steal her flute. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because Judy's so mad at her for being I, a yeah. virgin. That is what this happened. Is hard to follow. They do steal the flute. But yeah, I, I didn't follow this until they like had to explain it later to themselves and me in the next scene. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they knock her over. They steal her flute. Judy comes to talk some shit to her. And then just in time teacher shows up just in time again. And then we, we wind up back on the goddamn bus with the establishing shot again with Duke <laughs> determined to solve the case of the missing flute. Like, wow, this is quite a caper. Uh, Judy was standing right next to you. You got knocked over and your flute disappeared. Do you think she might have been involved? Perhaps it's your nemesis. Do you think? Your nemesis? <laughs> uh, no, no, no way. No, because I mean, just no. it's a lot. Like she tried to beat you up for not having sex. You don't think it's her? Yeah. So no. okay. Can you help me with this peanut butter? I got a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, but see now, this is very problematic because he, the two of them, were supposed to play a flute duet at a wedding, and now she doesn't have a flute for that. Well, how? So. However, will we get another flute? Also, do you think maybe they were trying to just avoid filming that? <laughs> <at all? laughs> so they were amazing. like, let's, let's have someone steal the flute because uh, she can't play the flute. And also, we don't even have a menu for this fake wedding. So yeah. let's never... <laughs> The church well, got stolen it. too. This is everything <laughs> keeps getting wow. taken. Man, those damn atheists just... <laughs> made a fucking skate park out of it. But it's leading somewhere so more, so, so much more fucking bizarre, right? So she goes, uh, she shows up at Jean, the neighbor's house, and she goes, "What's wrong?" And and, and Sherry goes, "Well, my my fucking flute was stolen, and it looks like." That's going to have to do all the work to propel Act 3 forward, and it really seems like it should be more emotionally impactful. So then the uh, old lady goes, oh, you want emotionally impactful? <laughs> Let me take you on a ride to my dead daughter room. Ooh. Did you say you have a dead daughter room? Is that what you call it? She goes, this was my daughter's room. She goes, the daughter in Seattle? She goes, no, the daughter in heaven. Oh, it's so sad. Yeah. For a oh. moment, I was like, oh, is this going to be another abortion story? Where <laughs> yes! like, this, is, this is the room for the baby I didn't have. Yeah. yeah. I was like, <laughs> because I was like, they could have, because this is about abstinence. So it has to be about sex, surely. Little did I know <laughs> that Chip actually doesn't really care what his movies are about, quote unquote. <laughs> and it's kind of just a free-for-all, so no, it's not about an abortion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember when this seemed like I, it was out of left field. Like, knowing now what happens later in the movie, it doesn't anymore feel out of left, but Jesus did mm -hmm. at the moment. It really felt like this was coming out of nowhere. Yeah, and the way the way Jean presents it was crazy, too. She's like, here's the death room. Check it out. And then she says, uh, I want to I wanna tell you something. I told you a little bit of a fib earlier, Sherry. And I was like, please tell me she killed her daughter. She murdered her daughter. This is going to be so fucking interesting. For being flat, you know. <laughs> no. For missing a note. No, we learned no. that the daughter committed suicide. Jean's daughter killed herself. And then her husband got drunk. And that night, the night of the suicide, went out and died in a car accident. Right. 
And so her lie was she told Sherry that they both died in the car accident. But really, she's covering up the shame of her daughter having taken her own life because that means that she might be in hell. Ooh. Right? Was that the undertone? That is the rule. Again, that is the spackle that was holding the other bad ideas together. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And also because Chip Rossetti just felt like he needed emotion here. So he's like, and then my husband died. And then, well, my dad was going to save my husband, but he was eaten by a bear. You didn't let me finish. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> there, yeah, you, I feel like the bear thing didn't impact you very much either. Hold on. <laughs> I also Hold on. had a raspberry seed in my dad's a small thing. This small thing. Well, more stuff. Wait. Uh, also, I. My husband. Uh, my husband had an abortion um, and, uh, <laughs> and I never forgave him for it. That's right. He had a fucking a bear years. abortion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he drank an alcohol beer and he crashed his car and the things I also <laughs> said. <laughs> I love this too because like basically they stand there for a while and go like, wow, that's really depressing. And she's like, yep. And I still love God anyway, even though he killed my daughter and my husband on the same night and everything. And then she goes, and then there's this awkward moment where Sherry's like, um, this is great and all, but what, why are you telling me any of this? She's like, oh, because my suicide daughter has a spare flu. <laughs> She's like, couldn't you have just said, I have a spare flu? This is a lot. <laughs> this is a lot. You could just, I see you. Okay. You're handing, you're handing me the flute like a samurai sword. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a lot of pressure. There's a lot of... Can you cut this baseball in half with that flute? <laughs> My daughter used this flute to uh, take her own life. <laughs> <laughs> Down her throat, choking. Choking on the cold metal anyway. Oh. Uh, you that's, that's, that's pretty serious. You left the blood right on. Should I just not... Now wipe it? <laughs> no, you can have Leave it. Leave the blood? I can, oh, I can have the blood. Don't wipe it off. Okay. Don't wipe off the blood. Okay. Do you so. mean like drink it? <laughs> have it okay never mind you know what never mind i'm taking the flute i'm taking the flute cool <laughs> all right so yeah so she gets her flute it's the day that they're gonna have uh, her and duke are gonna have their big flute off or whatever and then we cut to judy trying to talk her fe- friend into an abortion now this is a character we have not met in the movie at all right she's just like right. she's Brand just like uh, yeah no this is just brand new political cartoon separate Yep. So that they can yell about something <laughs> unrelated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like she, she's like, you know, you should go get an abortion. She's like, but my holy father will know that I've killed my baby. And I so wanted this to be all leading up to Judy, like taking care of her unborn child the same way they took care of Sherry's flute. Right. Like somebody knocks her down. They slip her a pill or anyway. But yeah, that's not where we're going. In fact, we will simply never see this pregnant character again. And we'll never know what she chose to do. Right. Well, really, I mean, obviously part of the reason Chip is writing this is to put words in young women's mouths. So this is the thing that you are supposed to say when your atheist Satan friend is trying to (laughs) try to pressure you into an abortion as they are wont to do. You know, I okay, All right. So then you should respond when they tell you that that the fetus isn't really a human anyway, you should respond by saying, quote, tell that to the abortion doctor who aborted a fetus only to have that fetus clutch his finger afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I thought doctor is that? Yeah. (laughs) Is that a thing? Yeah, you know what, ma'am? I'm going to need a name for that claim. I need an address. Talk to the abortion doctor who thought he'd aborted that Uh, fetus only to have it show up 20 years later and challenge him to a duel. What uh, the fuck are you talking about? Is that Dr. Kermit from Philadelphia who had, like, the cat jars? Uh, Just a pile of dead cats and dead babies all over his apartment? That's real. Uh, That's totally real. Yeah. What? We should also mention that they said uh, one of the school attendants said that uh, Judy, her campaign is called uh, Stamp Out Virginity. Yep. (laughs) Which I think like that's awesome. That's really punk, actually. (laughs) (laughs) And like if you just kind of tweaked it, like stamp out the idea of virginity. I think that is something that they should instill in school. Yeah. And, And there you go. Thank you, Chip, for this wonderful idea. 
Hell yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start impurity Lipped rings. We're gonna yeah yeah, fuck yeah yeah. Oh god, I really wanted I want to start impurity rings for like you know kids that have had sex to wear as a way of saying like yes I'm not chewed bubble gum so go fuck yourself. Or kids who haven't had yeah. sex that are okay with that philosophically, I think they should be I mean, allowed like, to wear I them. I masturbate to pornography. Also. Does that count? Yes, that counts. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot inclusive. You cannot fight pornography. It will always win. So, yeah. So, OK, now dad is talking to Ariel on the phone and I'm writing in my notes. Jesus, there's still half an hour of this movie. God. Uh, <laughs> and and the daughter comes in and she's like, Dad, I have a question or or more of a Van Halen song. Really? How do you know when it's love? You know, <laughs> might as well jump, daughter. I don't know. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> He's just, uh, he goes like, well, real love is why it's when you die on a cross because your dad's still pissed about the apple lady. Does that make sense, hon? Sure does. (laughs) Cool. Got it. So I'm going to go crucify myself in Gene's uh, suicide room. That's uh, what you're telling me? Jesus. (laughs) All right. Well, it's been, I don't know, minutes since something horrible was revealed about somebody. So let's move on to Becky's big revelation scene right now. Becky is the larger girl, the full bodied girl that keeps showing up every time Judy wants to bully Sherry to tell her how she'd be happy to, or, you know, to tell her to eat a rock or compare her to a raspberry seed or whatever. Right. Right. And so now Sherry is hanging out with all her little church friends when Becky walks by and they're like, you know, we really should make a Christian out of that chick. So they invite her into the library for a praise circle. Now, keep in mind, they're at church, right? This does not happen in the school. They're at church. They all look around at one of the other girls at church and say, we need to make a Christian out of her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you know, you're never Christian enough. There's always something yep. uh, to, to, to twist. So exactly, exactly. Yeah. So they, they, they bring her into the library and they're like, uh, dear God, I'm sure that you could see something of value in Becky. I can't think of anything to point out right now in the prayer, but you're omniscient. So you probably know something, right? She got attacked by a bear. I used that earlier. No. Nah. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. So then she's like, you know what? You guys have correctly diagnosed my psychological trauma because of your Christianity. Let me tell you my horrible backstory. I was raped by my cousin and my family is still actively covering it up. And I murdered Jean's yep. daughter. That was me. It wasn't a suicide. <laughs> <laughs> and made it look like she killed herself. It's so well. And look, the 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 phrasing that she uses is the person who, quote, stole my honor and quote, was a family member. Right. So we've managed to make a like the the declaration of having been raped by her cousin into a damaging message all by itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She says during this talk, quote unquote, my purity dream is another lost dream. Yeah. (sighs) As in. Yes. Yes. As and they all agree like. Yeah, that is really sad that you're not a virgin. <laughs> yeah, that because you because you're a victim of incest. Yeah. We we're focusing yeah. on that right. angle of it. And by the way, like their advice, her Christian friends' advice, are all like, "Well, you should really forgive your cousin and all of your family members that are still currently covering up this crime." Oh my! Right? God. Not like, "Hey, would you like us to go to the police about it?" Nothing like that. No. Oh no! No, pray for your abuser. And you're not a virgin because you were raped. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just out of the fucking book. Okay. So yep. they mentioned the incest rape thing. And I was like, this is unwatchable. I'm walking out again. Uh, this movie's a fucking war crime. <laughs> and I walked back in and hit play again. And they were like, you need to uh, pray about forgiving your rapist. And I was like, what is happening? I can't watch the rest of this movie. <laughs> yeah, Full boycott. Man. This is the future that conservatives want. Like, is that not just? (sighs) Oh, and okay. All right. So now it's time for the twist. Because like, again, like, you know, look, in Gramps goes to college. One of the girls drinks alcohol to death and another girl prays her back to life. So that's what Chip Rossetti knows he's got to match with this scene. And damn it, he makes it happen. 
Okay, so they come out of the library after saving Becky's soul, and Duke runs up and he goes, oh my God, guys, I've been looking for you everywhere. Someone urgently needed the prayer of a few teenage girls and you were nowhere to be found. The revelation you see Uh -uh. is that some sexually active teenage girl got slashed up with the knife for being sexually active. It was Judy. Yep. Uh, yep. So yep. the next the, the, the next terrible message that we're going to send is that remember how sexually active Judy is? That's why she got raped or like the, why somebody attempted to rape her and then cut her with a knife. Right. Because she was sexually active. Not because that guy is bad. Right. But because Judy was a sinner. Right. And really um, yep. what we should all be focusing on, everybody. I, t- I know I told you a lot just now. She's less beautiful because of the cutting. Um, that 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 is our focus right now. Ah! Right, right. Her beautiful face is sl- uh, slashed, much like the Joker himself. This <laughs> yeah, is the Joker's no. origin story. This would have been a better <laughs> oh, Joker movie. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. Okay. That's yeah. Crash was definitely more uh, more qualified for oh, best picture man, than if, that. And one. What, <laughs> if at the end of this movie we just panned out and we were in Arkham Asylum, this would make so oh much sense. <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? You know. So. Yeah, but like, no, that is the immediate place that all these characters go. They're like, Judy was cut up. I bet she kills herself because she'll be ugly now. What? Yes, yes they say. And uh, she's probably thinking about suicide out of nowhere. Jesus. Like, and it's almost side dialogue. Like, they're like leaving the frame and then someone drops that bomb. Yes. Yeah. yeah Becky what? comes in. She's, I bet she'll kill. You guys want to have a pool over. You don't want to have a pool. Okay, never mind. Never mind. I thought we would just bet. I think I feel like I saw a couple of you start <laughs> raising your hands. Did no? No. <laughs> Did you want to go like a snake draft or what are we doing? Oh, so nah. <laughs> but and also this is where this whole group of church these are church kids at church and they're like, yeah, I mean, uh, all this news we just heard sounds pretty bad. That being said, God has opened the door for us. This is a blessing. We're gonna go pray away the assault. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, literally, they, that's uh, Madison says, yeah, but God has really opened a door for us by getting Judy almost raped and then permanently disfigured. What luck? Yeah. Well, also, I think this really illustrates the, the predatory nature of people who do this type of thing. They wait until there is something ter- when someone is at their lowest yep. to try to recruit or, you know, try to, to do this. Oh. Um, and it's kind of like a, a giveaway that Chip doesn't realize that he wrote into his well, movie yeah. over and yeah. over again. Right, right, exactly. That's the thing is that generally their filmmakers have the sense not to have two characters go, hooray, rock bottom. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, oh, so, so they go to see Judy at the hospital. Now, <laughs> the, the cuts on Judy's face are amazing. It's yeah, the silliest. <laughs> Like this attacker was like, oh, you you don't want to have sex? That's cool. Scrape, scrape, scrape. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. It looks like like a four year old got into the box of band aids or oh, something. Oh, you're putting away your it's knife. So you, what do you what do you got? An emery board there? You're gonna scrape? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this. Okay, so now this is supposed to be like the emotional climax of the fucking movie. Becky sits down next to Judy and the two of them have been at each other's throats. But Becky has just been saved by the love of Jesus in the in the church just now. So she's going to forgive this girl that she's been enemies with since she was just a little kid. But they've mic'd it in such a way that you cannot hear a goddamn thing that Becky has said <laughs> yeah. during the emotional climax yeah. of the movie. <laughs> She goes, well, she went, she went, she went, she went. sorry, what? And then, and then Judy goes, I don't want to be loved by Jesus, though. And you're like, what the fuck did, are you responding to? <laughs> I wrote down because uh, I, I from the get go, I was like, I love Judy. She's my favorite character. I hope that I, I feel like at the end, they're all going to be friends. And I wrote down, I got what I wanted. But this is not how I wanted it. <laughs> this uh, this was the worst way for this to say, happen. Were, were you holding a monkey's paw when you wished that? I realize this is elaborate. That I did. I feel like I did a lot. <laughs> There's a camera there and there and there. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> All right. So, but Judy and Becky make up, and then it's Sherry's turn to face Judy's harangue. 
So she just like leans on her bed and, and starts crying. And then fucking Judy's character goes, what are you doing? I feel the power of Jesus moving into my body now. Oh, my God. I'm a Christian. Uh, right? Is that not what happens in a fucking movie? She she literally, she's like, what's that feeling? And they're like, that's the touch of Christ. And she's like, oh, yeah, how tangible. Yeah, I wrote down, this is like. This is a domino conversion uh, fantasy where it's just like <laughs> yes. you convert someone and then they convert someone else and then they'll convert someone else. And then pretty soon, um, <laughs> no one will be having sex. And it's my dream come true. <laughs> yes. This is an multi-level MLM. marketing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, you'll have as many as four Christians working right beneath you. And then they... <laughs> This is also hilarious because if, like, if you've ever been part of, like, a church that does this type of thing, you know that this is never how it goes. No. Someone just yells at you and then you leave. <laughs> and it's that over. So this is really just Chip, like, rewriting what he wishes it looked like. Exactly. That's the fantasy. That's why they have to make these movies. Because after all of this shit, we get the absolute Christian movie money shot where Judy says to all of them, Tell me about Jesus. Uh, <laughs> Lord. This is a bingo square, too, where people are like, Jesus Christ? The, the, <laughs> the like, Roman Empire, they're involved. Like, I feel like, is he killed by the Jews? That I guy? Thought, what? I, th I thought it was Trist. I thought it was pronounced this whole time. I thought it oh, was Trist. Oh, is it Trist. not Trist? No, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so also, what the fuck was this? The fucking nurse comes in and she's like, it's time for your medicine. And Judy starts going, I don't want more medicine. Oh. I want more Jesus. Yeah, yeah. This is illegal. Yeah. This is an illegal yes. message. I'm quite certain. Yeah. Again, as if this movie didn't have enough terrible goddamn messages in it. Then she comes in and she's like, no, I don't need secular medicine to make me well. I need Jesus of Nazareth. I'm not going to get measles, mumps, and rubella. Plus, that causes autism. I just need some Jesus. <laughs> okay. oh, man. Just piss me off with one more thing. Yes. Oh, my God. All right. We're almost done, guys. We're almost done. So now we're, we're hanging out <laughs> You're at just church. just saying that for us. Yeah, you guys uh, yeah. listening. Yeah, it is almost done, but thank you, Noah. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, they can see the runtime, can't they? Okay. So, yeah, Judy and her dad are now going to come to church with them, right? Because Judy became Christian in that last scene. I fucking guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I guess that's what happened. Okay. Who oh. the fuck knows? I don't know. She's Christian. <laughs> Great. Are we done? Yeah. <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. So the dad's like, thanks for christening my daughter. I would have thought we'd have put her in a in, in, a, in a in a in a longer skirt for this scene. But no, we didn't. OK. Uh, Chip said, no, she would still dress like that. But um, anyway, and then they have this like Judy wants like they go. They come to Ariel, the youth group leader. And she's like, hey, Judy wants to be in our purity pledge class now. But she was a bit of a before. So, oh, I Can we there's it's uh artificial scarcity we sold out <laughs> <laughs> she does have this moment where she like looks at judy and goes i don't know this girl in purity mm, maybe oh. we'll see i can tell by her slashed face that she's a whore so <laughs> oh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Good God. How much would you say God loves you? I see four points against with the slashes. Oh my God. Oh my God. Really, lady? How's your uterus? How about your what are the points against you? Oh. Fuck you. Oh God. All right. So and then they they all sit around her and her and Jean and her dad all sit around going like, wow, we all certainly have had a some kind of arc in our characters of late, haven't we? And, and then dad decides that he's going to get baptized. <laughs> and they yeah. have this amazing conversation where Sherry goes, but aren't you baptized? And he's like, yeah, but it was Catholic. Doesn't, doesn't oh. count. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so funny. Like he actually says, he's like, yeah, it was just like a sprinkly thing. That's bullshit. You have to be fully submerged like river Jordan, like all the way. God's yep. up there checking, like, volume of displaced water, and <laughs> it's got to be, like, a body amount. Yes. Yeah, so now her and, 
Sherry are going to be real baptized by real Christians. And of course, to us, this is the silliest goddamn thing in the world. But for Christians, this is such an amazing, like an important signal of which type of Christianity this movie is endorsing. Right. Yeah. No, no. Full submersion is the only one that counts. And uh, and you're not allowed to like Jews or whatever. Right. Did any of you yep. guys get baptized when you were kids? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up Catholic. Yeah. You got you got the sprinkly one. So that doesn't count. You're going. Yeah. All right. Noah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I got sprinkly baptized at some point, okay. but not not in my conscious memory or anything. All right. So now it's time for Ariel to give the big virgin dictorian speech right it's they're they're all going to put on their purity ring. this this thing that the movie has been building towards the entire time where all these teenagers pledge to not have sex <laughs> sorry i'm already laughing i'm already laughing because sweaty bobby's zoot suit is my favorite thing <laughs> in the movie. oh my god yeah they're having a like reverse incel ceremony and bobby is wearing the <laughs> he's very large to begin with, but he's got a zoot suit that's like four people's worth. It's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, my the thing that I really like about this scene is that during their speech, they give a caveat that like, if they don't live up to it, then it's okay. And they just like recommit. <laughs> but they, it's right. as if they know <laughs> that none of these teenagers are going to do anything that they've talked about with it. Because, you know, as soon as right. they get their hormones going, they're going to fucking throw that ring in a fire. <laughs> right. But but isn't 